my channel welcome back to another video i'm jesse and you're watching <sighs> all my life i had to fight why must my suffering continue in this way i pay my taxes okay i don't pay my taxes but this video, I know some of you were like, Jesse, why are you wearing a bowling shirt? I know nothing about sports. And so when I bought this shirt, I didn't know that it was a bowling shirt. And uh, I decided to wear it for this video because I'm going to be talking some trash about a book that centers sports. And this was the, this was the closest that I got. Not to say that bowling isn't a sport, but the book that I'm about to go in on is not about bowling it actually couldn't be farther from bowling if it freaking tried and so in this video we are going to be talking about taylor jenkins <laughs> taylor jenkins reads latest book which comes out towards the end of the year so this book was announced last week and i the synopsis no, 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 I'm getting ahead of myself. Taylor Jenkins Reid is already on the... Why are you staring at me? Akasha is looking at me like her life depends on it. Akasha is staring at me like she can see something that I can't and I don't like it. I will take you back to the shelter. Yeah. To the shelter. Can you say shelter? Can you say rehoming? Where was I? God, I'm all over the place. Why do you put up with me? She's already on the very thinnest of ice with me after Malibu Rising. I I don't even want to hear the words Malibu and Rising separately after reading that book. Y'all continuing to hold on to the belief that that book was good is the most impressive piece <laughs> of self-delusion <laughs> I've ever seen. Like what you like. I'm... I'm just giving y'all shit, but like that book was not it. I firmly hold myself to the belief that if Taylor Jenkins Reid's name was not stamped across the cover, y'all would not be so hype about Malibu Rising. Like those of you who read it, y'all know damn well it wasn't a good book. I had so many issues and I'm still, I know I've been promising for pretty much a year that I'm gonna come out with the dedicated Malibu Rising Wasted My Time video and I will, I will. Eventually. I'm putting it off because I just don't want to talk about that book. But when I found that Taylor Jenkins Reid had a new book coming out this year, I wasn't even excited. Like, okay, so backstory, we're going to rewind a little bit. I read and loved, loved Evelyn Hugo and Daisy Jones. I loved those books. I still love those books. Those are some of my favorite books. I do love Taylor Jenkins Reid. Like, I'm... I want to establish that. I'm wild about what she can do, the stories that she can weave, the tales that she builds, the way that she executes them, her grasp on the English language, all of it, the atmosphere that she creates, the characters that she makes you sink into, all of that. Taylor Jenkins Reid is a good writer. She can write her ass off. That being said, when I found out that she had a book coming out this year, right after Mal Malibu Rising, I was like, <sighs> nope I can tell already it's not it's not sounding good it's not it's not so then I was like okay okay calm down Jesse check out the synopsis a cautious paw print in the snow would form a more riveting synopsis than what I'm about to read the book is titled Carrie Soto is back already already we're not giving. Carrie Soto is fierce and her determination to win at any cost has not made her popular. By the time Carrie retires from tennis, she is the best player the world has ever seen. She has shattered every record and claimed 20 slam titles. And if you ask her, she's entitled to every one. She sacrificed nearly everything to become the best with her father as her coach. But six years after her retirement, Carrie finds herself sitting in the stands of the 1994 US Open watching her record be taken from her by a brutal, stunning British player 
named Nikki Chan. At 37 years old, Carrie makes the monumental decision to come out of retirement and be coached by her father for one last year in an attempt to reclaim her record, even if the sports media say that they never liked the battle axe anyway, even if her body doesn't move as fast as it did, and even if it means swallowing her pride to train with a man she once almost opened her heart to, Bowie Huntley. Like her, he has something to prove before he gives up the game forever. In spite of it all, Carrie Soto is back for one epic final season. In this riveting and unforgetting, unforgettable novel, Taylor Jenkins Reid tells a story about the cost of greatness and a legendary athlete attempting a comeback. I'm not going to lie, y'all. If I were in the bookstore and I picked up a book and I read that in the back, I would put the book down. That sounds really boring. It's not giving. Tennis? Tennis? Tennis. You're probably wondering how you got here. There are so many other sports. Tennis? I know y'all are going to be like, Jesse, don't make it about race. Don't do it. Don't do it, Jesse. Don't do it, Jesse. Don't make it about race. But I'm about to make it about race. You came out of retirement because an Asian woman broke your record. Let's just say, I'm sorry, an Asian woman broke your record. And you're like, I must, I must come out and <laughs> uproot my life. Just, bitch, just sit down and relax. That being said, I did run varsity and box, so I used to be an athlete, but I'm not anymore. So I can empathize though, as somebody who used to be an athlete with her wanting to come out of retirement because point blank, someone broke her record, you know? That's understandable, but I'm worried about how the story might go. This narrative of this like white woman coming out of retirement so that she can reassert her record over an Asian woman. I just, I don't know. Is it just me? Like, am I being too sensitive? Let me know in the comment section down below. But it just, with the story being written by a white woman, I just, it, I don't know. It makes me feel weird. It is a small thing though. Like that's not at all even like the top 10 of the reasons why this book is and the first one through five is that it sounds boring it sounds so boring and those of you who read Malibu Rising you may or may not remember that Carrie Soto was in Malibu Rising so it's cool that she is continuing this kind of theme of connectivity but and so it she was in the scene where where she was like having a meltdown on the lawn because her ex is trash and th things are being thrown and there's a lot of yelling and, and screaming and it was a very emotionally charged scene. And I remember reading that scene and being like, I'm not interested in this. So when I found out that she is gonna be the topic of the new book, I was just like, here's my concern for TJR. I am concerned for her. I've been saying it for a while. Like, I don't think I've said it on my channel, but I've been talking about it with my friends. I have this theory that once an author's name starts getting a little too big on the cover, as big or damn near as big as the title, that's when their books start sucking. That was part of why I was so uncomfortable with Malibu Rising because once I saw the cover and I saw the size of her name, I was like, oh no. Here's an example. I would like to introduce Exhibit A into evidence. Seven Husbands of Evelyn Hugo. You need a microscope to find this woman's name. Look, it's right here. Just, yep. As it should be, the title is taking center stage. Prosecution enters Exhibit B into evidence. Who are you? <laughs> I can't find her. Okay, she's right here. She's right there. Then we have the cover from Malibu Rising. And the book sucked. I'm just telling you, I'm just telling you. I read Malibu Rising in shock. I was in shock that the woman who wrote this, these, could then write Malibu Rising. I was like, she's been, she's been kidnapped. She's been kidnapped and she wrote this novel to tell us like, hey, obviously this isn't me. Send help. Somebody come check on me. I'm not all right. Somebody come get her. She's been kidnapped. Okay. I feel like my point was made. It's not giving. <laughs> I'm 
sorry, it's not giving. That does not. I, I don't even know what else to say. Like that, that's literally all I have to say. That being said- <laughs> Not me about to say something else. That being said, while reading Malibu Rising, I was kind of like, you know what? I feel with this novel, with Malibu Rising, that TJR was like, yo, you know I can write. We all know I can write. We all know I can create characters that are unrivaled. So now I don't have to anymore. You know I'm a good writer and now I'm just gonna get my paycheck. So maybe Carrie Soto is supposed to just be that. Like maybe Malibu Rising was just supposed to be that. Maybe it wasn't trying to continue this legacy of Daisy Jones and Evelyn Hugo. Maybe with these next few books or maybe even all of her future books, she's not really seeking that earth shattering impact because she's done it already. And, and that's completely valid. I just did not like the turn that her writing took in Malibu Rising. And if it wasn't for her being her, I would have DNF'd it. But I kept reading it because I was like, surely it gets better. She's such a genius. She's so masterful. I know it gets better. I know it does. And like, it took me over a hundred pages to get into Evelyn Hugo. And I gave it five out of five stars. It was so amazing. I know damn well Carrie Soto is not gonna come close to Daisy Jones and Evelyn Hugo. Reading that synopsis just, it. there's nothing about that synopsis that crackles and, and sings. And I feel like if, like if we're being perfectly honest with ourselves, right? Out of all of her book synopsis, sis, sigh. If you were to hear them all, Carrie Soto is in there. And, and someone was like, which one out of all her books would you want to read first? I know damn well Carrie Soto is not going to be the one. It's going to be really low on the on the list unless you're really into tennis <laughs> and coming out of retirement because someone broke your record. Girl, it's going to get broken eventually. You already said it. Go sit on the beach and calm down. Okay, so let's talk in the comment section down below. What do you think of this synopsis? Are you excited? Do you feel like Taylor Jenkins Reads writing has not been what it was. Do you think I'm tripping? Do you agree, disagree, whatever. That's gonna do it for this video. I do have a Patreon where I make exclusive content for my wonderful patrons that is linked in the description box below along with all of my other social media information. Stay safe, be good to yourselves, be good to others, and I hope to see you in my next one.